and welcome back to my channel. I am Mrs. P. Tarleton. If you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Today I wanted to talk to you about digital interactive notebooks. We know we need these notebooks, but how can we do it through a distance learning model or a blended learning model? So I've got some examples here and I'm going to show you how you can make your own that's perfectly designed for you and your students. So today we're gonna to be creating a digital interactive notebook. We're gonna use Google Slides and I'm gonna go over how to edit the master slide within Google Slides. Let's get started. Here I am within Google Slides. I always just delete the boxes, start with a clean slate. First thing you have to decide is what size or what dimensions do you want for your interactive notebook. Some people like it horizontally, some like it vertically, so landscape or portrait mode. You have many options. If it's gonna stay digital, it doesn't matter. If you ever want it to print, you wanna think about that. I am going to go ahead and set mine up like a regular sheet of paper. So I went into page setup and custom size and I'm gonna go 8.5 by 11. Now it looks like a regular sheet of paper. This is gonna be the dimensions of my interactive notebook. There are certain elements of your interactive notebook that you don't want your students to be able to edit. Where you're going to create that is in the master slides. You go up here to view, go to master. So here we are in the master slide. The first thing we want to design and draw on here, now that we've cleared out the slide, we want to put our cover page. So let's create that by inserting a shape. If you want the rounded corners, this is the one you would use. You're going to draw it, and then just using this dot here, you can rotate it. I'm gonna slide this over, drag it down to fill the page, and across, almost all the way across, because we gotta leave a little room here for our tab. I wanna change the color here. Click on it, it's highlighted. Go up here to the bucket, and I like gradient. I like this color and add it. So now I'm gonna put the title. So I'm gonna insert and I wanna do word art, digital. If you hold down shift and enter, you'll get another line. Shift and enter, then enter when you are done. There's your title. You can change the font. You can change the color. However you would like, it's up to you. Again, I'm gonna to go to gradient and I am going to choose maybe this one, a darker version. Nope. So there I have my title. Down here, I want the students to be able to put their name or their subject. I would insert text box. I highlighted it. I'm gonna increase the size here. So I want to add a placeholder here where the students can actually edit. So remember I said none of this is editable by the students. However, if I go up here right next to the text icon to insert text, it will give you options to do a placeholder. I'm going to do a title placeholder and I want it here. And this will give the students a spot to enter their name. I'm gonna do another one. So now when we get out of the master and this is the regular slide, you notice here I can click and I can edit these sections. That's perfect. Let's go back into our master. So here we have our master. If you wanna give the students options of colors, you can create more slides just like this. I'm gonna Duplicate the layout. I right clicked on the slide on the left over here. I duplicated the layout. I'm gonna give them three choices of colors. Click on my first one and the background here. Click on the background. Go up to my fill bucket. And what if they want a gray? Just a gray background. They have that option. And I'm gonna change the words here from yellow to maybe a black. That would look cleaner on the gray. So there's our second option of a title page. So now we have the basic cover. Now we need to add our tabs. 
So insert a shape. We're going to do the same shape. I'm going to rotate it around. I'm going to control C, control V will make more copies. And I want them spread along the edge here. So I'm just going to kind of guide them out a little bit. And now I want them evenly spaced. If I left click and drag this over all of these, I can go up here to arrange and I want them to distribute evenly vertically. That will evenly space them all the way across. And then I can also have them left aligned so that they'll be all up against the edge here. Not sure if they all are. The last thing I want to do, I want to send them behind the notebook page. So arrange, order, send back. And now they will look like they are behind the notebook. The other thing I like to do to my tabs is add a drop shadow. I go to format, format options. Over here you have a drop shadow. That'll just give your tab some dimension. You do the down arrow, if you add distance to it, it'll just give a bigger drop shadow. See the shadow growing? Gives it more dimension. Then I'm going to insert the subjects or you can allow your students to insert the subjects if you want. Text box. There's math, drag it over. And here you can center it within the box. If you want your students to add their own subjects so they can put them in the order they want, you would just go here and you would insert a subtitle placeholder, title placeholder too. Subtitle placeholder is probably better. And then the students can actually enter their own subject name. So let's go back to out of the master slide, go back to our regular slide. If they click here, they'll be allowed to enter their own subject name. So that's how you do that. Let's go back into the master. I want to create page dividers and I want them to color code and match with my tabs. So I right clicked and changed the color. This is going to be my math section. I want to insert word art and I want math. Again, you can change the color, you can change the font. Now I want to go up here and I want to change the tab to the same color. Click on it. Make sure you've got the tab and not the word. And you want to make that the same color as your math tab because that says math. I'm going to change the background. So for this one, I let them choose the name that they wanted or the subject. So instead of putting the title here, I'm going to put a placeholder there so that they can put that. They can enter their own title. But I do want my second tab to have the same color. So click on my tab, click in the tab and not the letters. Go up here, fill color and change it to that same green color. You're going to go ahead and do that for every one of these tabs. So we have math and we have whatever they're going to choose for their other subjects. So now I have to start filling the pages. What page backgrounds do I want the students to have? Thinking for writing, they may need a slide with writing prompts like their intro, their being, their bang, their bongo, and their conclusion. So let's go ahead and build one for that. And because it's all digital, you can make it as fancy as you want, as simple as you want. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to enter a shape, one with the rounded corners. Just think it looks nicer. I'm going to copy and paste it. Control C, Control V. This is where I'm going to have them write out the different parts of their draft. So they'll be putting their thoughts here. Remember, if you click them, it will evenly space them apart. Arrange, distribute vertically. Now they're all evenly spaced. I can also do the same thing. And I can have them all arranged one way or the other, one side or the other. Can change the color.
And what I want to do in each of these, I'm going to label them for what they're going to write in there. So I just need a text box. This will be their intro. Let's bold that and increase the font. Because I like the size, I'm going to control C that. Enter another text box. Control V will paste it. And first item is bing, bang. Don't have to keep entering the text box. It'll set it up for me. And this is bongo and control V. And this is my conclusion. So in order for them to be able to edit this, I need to put that placeholder in. So now I've entered a subtitle placeholder for every single part of their writing draft. If we go back over here to the interactive notebook and they go up here to insert a slide and they want to do a writing draft, they just choose that slide and see here they can go in and they can edit it. This is how it will look on their end, but they cannot change any of this, any of the intro bing bang bongo parts, the writing draft words, nothing. They can only fill in the blanks here. I would also like my students to have a place for their math. For me, I would like math. So I'm gonna insert an image and I want coordinate plane. I'm not inserting it as a background because sometimes it gets distorted when you're dealing with grids especially. Very noticeable. I'm gonna stretch it out and I'm going to give them a place to write. So insert, doesn't matter if it's a title, any one of these will allow them to write. Often I like to do card sorts, and if you wanna do that, you can also include those here. So all I did was insert a table. Always, I want it to be centered. Sometimes center it, and then we wanna center it in the box, and never. And now you have a template for them to use to do a card sort. So with the always, sometimes, never, if you're in the student and you tell them, I want you to sort these and you send them a bunch of terms or whatever it is that you have into an always, sometimes, never, they would just add their slide that you've already created for always, sometimes, never. Then here's the Google slide. They left click, hold it down, highlight it all, control C, they can come over here and control V and they can paste them. And now they can easily sort them into always, sometime, and never. So that's how you would do that. For the writing prompt, if you want them to write a rough draft, they would just come get your template. You can have templates for whatever you'd like and they would just add it from your master slide. If I wanted them to graph, tell them pull out your graph paper and here I have it. They can insert a point or they can insert a line. So we know it goes through five and four or negative five and four. There you have it. They can add arrows to their line because it's continuing. The only thing I have not shown you yet is how to get these tabs to be clickable. So we have a page for math. I'm gonna add that slide. And behind my slide, I have my always, and I have this graph paper. I can drag it up and slide them. These can be sorted just like you would in a notebook. So the only thing we have not done is link these tabs. So these tabs for your notebook have to be linked to a slide. So I'm gonna add my colors. I'll just do the blue and the green one. So my math one and this one. Go into your master slide. So now we're going to link each of our tabs to our main covers for that section. So I'm gonna click on the blue tab and I'm gonna to go to either the insert little link here or up at the top left, insert and then link. And then I'm not gonna put a hyperlink in there. I'm gonna to go to slides and my blue one, my math one is on slide two. Apply. Now I'm gonna do the same for the green. Insert a link, 
and we want it to go to slide three, apply. So notice here, we're in the slides, but when they click on the tabs, the tabs are not working. However, when you go to present, the tabs will work. You want your students to be able to tab without being in present mode. You would want to insert a transparent shape. So I just put a shape in here and then I'm going to go up here to the bucket and I'm going to make it transparent, make the border also transparent. And now I can link that or the students, if they're older, they can link that to slide two because that's our blue one apply. Now, if they're in present mode or they're not in present mode, it won't matter. It will take them to slide two. And you can do the same thing for the green tab, insert in a shape, left click, highlight it, make it transparent. And now it's highlighted. So we want to link it to slide three. Now, when you click on it, it will take you to slide three. And remember, it doesn't have a title because I left it so that they could choose their title for that one. We can sort these. So say this is going to be their English. They would just write English in here. And then behind their green, they're going to have everything for English. Behind their blue, they're going to have everything for their math tab. The only other thing that I would suggest is a return back to the cover page to choose another section. Or you could add tabs to every single one of these slides. But for me, I'm just going to insert a home and this is going to be linked to slide number one, the first slide. All I have to do is control C and control V. It will paste it in the same spot and it's still linked to the first slide. And then the students would just keep their pages just like they would in a notebook organized in here. They could add blank slides. However they want to change this, they can add whatever it is they need. So another thing that you may find helpful is a Venn diagram. So you want to insert your two ovals. Control C, Control V will duplicate that or just Control D. I always do Control C, Control V don't know why. And then line these up and you want them to be overlapping of course. Then you're going to change the color on each of them. And then on one of them you want to change the transparency so the other color comes through. So if you go up here to the bucket, go to custom, it will give you the option to change the transparency. So you want to just drop that down a little bit so the pink will come through. And there you have it. You hold down control, I like them both. I can make them wider. And there you have your Venn diagram. You could label and name each of these slides so that when you go in, you know what they are. So you've learned how to use Google Slides to create digital interactive notebooks. I've given you all the basics. All you need to do is add the pages that you need to customize it for your class. If you find a notebook online that you can use for free, Bonus tip here, you can go in and edit their master as well. Just make sure you're giving credit to the original author of that. If they've given it to you for free, they want to be at least recognized. So don't forget to do that. And remember, step out and be uniquely wonderful you. Have a great day.